this is the last lecture of uh, part 1 uh, where we were uh, recalling or reviewing the basic uh, semiconductor device physics. Uh, the objective of uh, this talk is primarily to indicate to you what are the various methods which are used uh, in the fabrication of devices. It is impossible to discuss the details of uh, fabrication in one lecture because there are several intricacies. However, uh, this just to indicate what methods are used and those of you who are interested you can look at the references. For uh, beginners, the good references will be one uh, V. physics and technology of semiconductor devices uh, for beginners and uh, also our reference uh, Jaspreet Singh, semiconductor auto electronics by Jaspreet Singh and you can also see semiconductor auto electronics by Pallab Bhattacharya. So, these are some of the basic references. However, there are uh, plenty of uh, specialist books and articles which are available on these growth processes and uh, growth technology. We would simply introduce you to the various uh, growth processes. So, if I take a typical semiconductor optoelectronic device, it has a substrate, so a substrate. a lower contact electrode which is a metal, an upper contact electrode which is also a metal. What I am showing is a longitudinal cross section, a cross section like this, longitudinal cross section of a heterostructured device. So if you see a typical a heterostructure device, then the substrate would occupy most of the device because the thickness here is typically 60 to 100, 60 to 100 micron. Is the substrate over that you have layered structures? One, two, three. There may be many more layers. And of course, on top the contact electrodes 1 and contact electrode at the bottom. A typical uh, device whose I have shown a longitudinal cross section. So, these devices could be for example, in a, in a double heterostructure LED, this could be aluminum gallium arsenide for example, this could be gallium arsenide this could be again aluminum gallium arsenide and this is a P plus. So, I start with an N plus substrate. So, N plus substrate on which you deposit a N aluminum gallium arsenide, a gallium arsenide, P aluminum gallium arsenide, P plus gallium arsenide. I am just taking a simplest structure and on top again there is a metal contact. So, this is a simple double heterostructure LED or a laser diode. As you know now why we need N plus and metal, N plus and P plus and metal and then we have contact between N and N plus, we have contact between P and P plus because these are all ohmic contacts. So, this would be a typical structure. Therefore, what do we have? We have a substrate which is a bulk crystal and followed by on top there are layers. These layers could be typically anywhere, the thickness could be anywhere from 0.1 to few microns, maybe 2, 3, 4 microns. 
typical thickness of these layers. So the thickness of these layers is quite small compared to the thickness of the substrate. Therefore, the substrate is grown by different techniques compared to the top layers here. They are grown by different techniques. So these are grown by bulk crystal growth techniques. So bulk crystal growth. And the top layers are grown by epitaxial techniques. Epitaxial technique. Because the thickness of the layers which are grown here are very small compared to the bulk crystal. And these epitaxial techniques are generally used when the thickness is very small, anywhere from a tens of angstroms to a few microns then these techniques would work. Otherwise, you have to go for bulk crystal growth techniques. So I will briefly discuss both bulk crystal growth techniques and epitaxial growth techniques. Some of them just to give you an idea. However, as I indicated that for details, you may have to see several texts <coughs> or specialist papers depending on the detail that you are looking for. If you take bulk crystal growth here, yeah, that is essentially from our point of view to grow the substrate here, there are two important techniques which are used. One is called the furnace method or Bridgman method. There are several variations of this method, Bridgman technique or method or sometimes also called furnace. And the other one is very well known, Zokrowski. There are others and variations of these, but these two are basic processes to have bulk crystal growth. Epitaxial technique to have epitaxial layers. There are three important techniques as I had indicated once earlier, liquid phase epitaxy, vapor phase epitaxy. So this is LPE vapor phase epitaxy BPE and molecular beam epitaxy. Or MB. Each one has their adv advantages and features the molecular beam epitaxy. We will briefly discuss all these three techniques. Let me start first with the Zokrowski method here, Zokrowski method. In this method, you have a chamber, a lead nitride crucible. There are different structures, different variations. So it's a there could be because sometimes this process is done at uh, atmospheric pressure or sometimes it could be done at high, high pressure therefore in enclosed volumes, sealed 
volume at controlled pressure. What is done is, is one begins with a seed crystal. This is a molten a melt, melt means molten starting solution here. For example, if you are growing a single crystal gallium arsenide, so let us say this is you want to grow a single crystal gallium arsenide or silicon or let us say silicon. Then you start with the silicon, molten silicon here and then there is a single crystal. This molten silicon is this melt is the temperature of this melt is just above the melting temperature, just above melting point. The melt here is just above melting point. This is a crucible, it is a lead nitride, usually lead nitride crucible PBN and this is heated. What I am showing now from the sides is the heating coils. And there is a crystal is starting, this is a seed crystal. As we draw all the parts, everything the setup will become clear and the seed crystal is slowly pulled up. This has a temperature just above the melting point. Therefore, as you slowly pull up, the temperature here is much less than the melting point. Therefore, it crystallizes, the melt crystallizes on the seed and as you pull up, the crystal keeps on growing on the seed. In fact, as you pull up, depending on the pulling rate, depending on the pulling rate, the size of the crystal could be much larger. For example, let me show you here. And you could have crystal growing big crystals. You started with a small seed, a seed crystal here and this is being pulled up. So, this is the seed and the crystal is getting, that is the melt is getting crystallized to form the single crystal. So, this is the single crystal. This was the seed crystal. So, to begin with the seed is in the melt, the melt has a temperature just above the melting point and you start the starts very slowly pulling the seed crystal. So, the melt which is in contact with the seed when it comes up it crystallizes and because it is in contact with the crystal seed it crystallizes on the seed with exactly same lattice structure with the same directions and therefore, you have a single crystal and then as you, if you control the pulling speed, then this diameter can be varied. That is the size of the single crystal could be varied. It is simple pulling through this, but the environment is controlled. It is not in open. Sometimes this chamber may have uh, atmosphere anywhere from 1 to 20 atmosphere. 1 to 20 atmosphere because there are several issues involved in terms of the vapor pressure of the uh, material that you start, the starting material. So, if you are, this is called Zokralski method to grow single crystals from a melt. You can grow, for example, silicon crystals have with the diameter as large as 30 centimeters. So, D or more. You start with a small seed and grow and grow a crystal which is uh, as large as 
30 centimeter in diameter. So, this is one of the techniques to grow what, uh, what are called if you see those bulls or ingots, they are this is called or ingot like a, a huge cylinder and uh, then you cut these into slices to make the vapors out of this. So, you can grow large bulls or ingot from this stage using this technique, Zakralski technique of single crystal growth. And this is diced or sliced, in normally it is called dicing to make the substrates, the wafers that you have, the silicon wafers that you see are obtained by dicing these bulls which are formed by the Zokralski technique. The advantage of, uh, let me now discuss the Bridgman technique and then you see the advantage that Z using Zokralski technique you can grow very thick, very large bulls or large single crystals, whereas the Bridgman technique or furnace technique is used to grow smaller crystals. As the name indicates, it has a furnace. So, let me now discuss the Bridgman technique here. We have to discuss five techniques, so about five minutes each or five to ten minutes maximum. So, in this technique, This is the furnace, usually these are uh, graphite boards. Graphite boards and this is uh, quartz. quad cylinder heated this indicate the heating element or heating coil what is done is at one end of the board a single crystal is placed single crystal and it is filled with the melt. The melt comprises of poly, for example, if it is silicon, it is polycrystalline silicon. So, polycrystalline silicon, how do we get polycrystalline silicon? These, the starting points, the starting points which are like polycrystalline silicon is obtained by chemical methods. Chemical methods of, okay, let me show you an equation here. How to get uh, polycrystalline silicon? So, you start with the chemical reaction in a furnace, silicon carbide and SiO2 are the starting point, and in a furnace, at high temperatures you can generate metallurgy grade of silicon, SiO2 is the gas and CO is the gas which goes out and what you get is metallurgy grade of silicon. So, silicon carbide plus silica, starting point of silicon is silica, silica is a plenty in sand. So, this is the first step of crude process to get metallurgy grade of silicon 
metallurgy grade is approximately 98 percent purity. The metallurgy grade silicon then is it interacts with the HCl here and you get trichlorosilane SiHCl3 is trichlorosilane a compound trichlorosilane and hydrogen gas. This is reduced further in a hydrogen environment reduction in hydrogen environment gives you silicon plus 3 HCl, HCl goes as a gas. This is the chemical reaction of heating and reducing reduction, this is called reduction process. So, what you get is high purity silicon which is electronic grade silicon. high purity it is the impurities are one part per billion or less. So, 10 power minus 9 minus 10 the numbers that refer to the impurity concentration. So, this is electronic grade silicon. So, you can get polysilic polycrystalline silicon by this technique and that is the starting point here both here and in the Zakharovsky technique the melt comprises of chemically obtained silicon and then you have to grow single crystal. Growing single crystal means what? Single crystal does not mean one cubic lattice, one cell. Single crystal means all over that structure, all over that material you have a periodic structure of silicon. It is therefore, you call it as a single crystal. So, single crystal means everywhere there is crystalline structure polycrystalline means you have crystalline structure, but there are domains. So, you may have a polycrystalline means you have a polycrystalline silicon, it means there could be domains where there is crystal structure. Crystal structure is not uniformly present everywhere, but in this a particular plane may be in this fashion and in another it could be like this, in another it could be like this. So, this is what I am showing is crystal plane. So, this is polycrystalline because crystalline structure is not over the entire silicon here, over the entire structure. Therefore, it is polycrystalline. Single crystal means over the entire material or entire structure or entire piece you have one crystal setup that is the lattice structure is the same everywhere. So, that is obtained by one that is the Kralsky technique which I discussed and the second one is the furnace method. In the furnace method this boat is pulled I am only giving you an idea the techniques are uh, uh, quite involved. So, the boat is pulled through a temperature gradient towards cooling. So, this end is cool end and this here it is hot end. In fact, everywhere this is at a maintained at a high temperature and then this is cooler temperature. It is a lower temperature, cool does not mean it is directly it does not go to atmospheric temperature, it is at a lower temperature. So, the boat is pulled through this. What is the idea? Idea is at as this passes to temperature below the melting point, it starts crystallizing because this end first meets temperature which are lower than the melting point. So, it starts solidification. So, because there is a single crystal present the solidification takes crystalline form because there is a seed which is already present and therefore, the entire thing if you pull this through the entire thing forms a single crystal and this is called the furnace method or Bridgman method. The idea behind formation of single crystals using bulk single crystals using the furnace method and the Bridgman, the Bridgman method and the Zokralski method. As I said for details please see references and specialist uh, articles on this. So, from these single crystals we start we get the substrates. Substrates are usually diced wafers of 
anywhere 100 micron thick depends on the material also. Some materials are thicker, thicker substrates are used in some materials the substrate is slightly thinner. Typically 60 to 100 Once you have the single crystal substrate, so this is the substrate, so the two methods that I have described is to obtain the substrate. If you have to have doped substrates in the melt, before the single crystal is formed, in the melt you include the dopants, required dopants are included in the melt, the starting melt, so that you get for example, I wrote n plus substrate. How do we get n plus substrate? For example, if you add arsenic in silicon melt, then you will have n plus substrate. So, the dopants have to be added in the melt before the single crystal is formed, if you want a doped substrate. So, we have a substrate, now we want to have these methods, epitaxial methods to grow on top. So, epitaxy, apparently this is a combination of epi plus taxis. This means upon or on top, this is apparently Greek word. So, on top or upon and taxis it seems ordered arrangement, arrangement, ordered arrangement. So, epitaxial growth means growth on top, ordered arrangement, ordered growth on top, ordered arrangement of atoms to form layers, epitaxial, epitaxial technique. So, I have indicated the three techniques, liquid phase epitaxy, vapor phase epitaxy. This is also called CVD, chemical vapor deposition. And if the chemicals involve organometallic compounds, you so this is CVD. CVD is also vapor phase epitaxy, and MOCVD. In fact, most of the gallium arsenide, aluminum gallium arsenide are grown by MOCVD. MOCVD is metal organic chemical vapor deposition. So because if the chemicals which are being, if the deposit, if the chemicals involved in the CVD process, if they have organometallic compounds, organometallic, organometallic compounds, then it is also called MOCVD, metal organic vapor, chemical vapor deposition organometallic, what do I mean by, I will give you an example. For example, trimethyl gallium, TMG, trimethyl gallium. So, methyl group CH3, 3 gallium, trimethyl gallium. So, this is methyl group is uh, organic, gallium is metal. So, it is an organometallic compound, trimethyl gallium. This is one of the starting point for uh, gallium arsenide, organometallic. MOCVD and the last one is MBE. So, let me in the remaining part of this talk, let me discuss briefly the three techniques which are widely used for epitaxial layers. LPE, this is the first technique, liquid phase epitaxy. As the name indicates, the starting material is a liquid, liquid phase epitaxy. So, this is done in a chamber, you have, let me draw this, you will see nice figures in books and uh, you will also see in the internet, there are several uh, articles and uh, which show videos. 
So, this is I am drawing it because as you see you will understand what it is. There is a slot here for example, a rectangular slot through a graphite. So, this is graphite. This is it is a graphite container through which there is slot. There are also on top there are like pill box. One, two, three. This is these are boxes, cylindrical boxes down pill box. Okay. Means you can pour some liquid into this. So, so these cylinders go down into this. And on a slider, there is a slider here. My belief is that if I do this drawing in front of you, then you can exactly understand what it is rather than directly show you a diagram which is already existing. So, there is a slider. So, this is a slider. This is a slider. This is a slider on which you place the substrate. let us say gallium arsenic. I did not describe uh, how to get uh, gallium arsenide single crystals. I talked about silicon because that was the easiest. Gallium arsenide is more complicated. Uh, it actually has to be done in a sealed close uh, uh, closed furnace because, because of the vapor pressure considerations. But anyhow let me not go into that right now. In this you put the melt. So, gallium arsenide and aluminum gallium arsenide melt. Now, what is this gallium arsenide melt? Gallium arsenide melt melt gallium arsenide melt is super saturated solution super saturated solution. solution of gallium arsenide in gallium. Gallium is the solvent, gallium is the solvent. Gallium arsenide in gallium dissolved in gallium. It is a super saturated solution of gallium arsenide in gallium. Similarly, here it is for ga aluminum gallium arsenide it is aluminum and gallium here aluminum and arsenic aluminum plus arsenic arsenic in gallium. So, gallium is the solvent molten this is melt melt means it is a molten solid in this case metal aluminum arsenic gallium are all metal molten that is why melt super saturated and why super saturated you can imagine it is a basic crystal crystallographic process you, you remember even in the schools we have making sugar crystals from sugar solution you have super saturated sugar solution and you cool it and when you cool sugar crystals are formed because it was super saturated at a slightly elevated temperature you cool it then it cannot hold any more those sugars and sugar crystallizes. It is the same process which is used in this that you have super saturated melt and this is the gallium arsenide substrate arsenide and you slide it so that this comes exactly when it comes exactly under this pill box here it just sets there it just holds on to that and then all of these are at some temperature let us say some temperature of I do not know I am saying let us say it is at uh, generally this is uh, around 800 degree centigrade 800 degree centigrade approximately around 800 degree centigrade. The melting point of gallium arsenide is actually very high it is I think 1237 
1, 2, 3, 7 or 3, 8 degree centigrade is the melting point of gallium arsenide. However, when it is in a solution, it is it is in the liquid form even at around 800 degree centigrade, because a solution has a lower melting point compared to the pure solvent. Now, this is approximately around 800. When this gallium arsenide is sitting under the pill box, the temperature of this, please see this whole thing is in a oven. When the temperature is reduced, what happens is gallium arsenide, crystalline gallium arsenide deposits on this. It is the same process of crystallization of sugar, but now there is a substrate gallium arsenide on which there are layers which are deposited, gallium arsenide gets deposited. The time for which the temperature has been lowered determines the thickness of the layer that is grown on gallium arsenide under this. Next, if I want to grow aluminum gallium arsenide, the slider is pushed further to the next slot under this pill box. There is aluminum gallium arsenide melt and you again lower the temperature and aluminum gallium arsenide will get deposited on the substrate. So, you have gallium arsenide on which aluminum gallium arsenide deposited. So, you if you need again gallium arsenide to be deposited or vice versa to make double heterostructures, you can have more chambers here. So, there are there can be more chambers to deposit layers after layer. What is the simplicity that you see here? The arrangement is very, very simple, only a simple graphite container with a slider and two pill boxes, you put the melt and the whole thing is in a furnace. I will next describe you the other two. You will see the complications in these. This is simplest and even today they are used. When you need to deposit layers, the thickness in LPE, the thickness of layers, if you need thickness greater than or of the order of 1000 angstroms, that is 100 nanometer, LPE can be used. Why greater than this? Because the control on the thickness is not very good because you have to slide it to the next point. So, the control is not very good. You cannot grow have control of 10 angstroms, 5 angstroms which you have in the other two techniques. So, if you do not need abrupt junctions with the precise control, then LPE is the best technique. It is the simplest most cost effective and whenever you need to grow thicker layers, LPE is the best. And uh, every device does not require such abrupt precise junctions to make quantum well structures. You cannot make quantum well structures with LPE for example, because you do not have so much of control. But for many applications you do not need, uh, you need to use thicker layers and LPE is still a commercial technique which is used to grow optoelectronic devices. This is LPE. So, let me go over to the next vapor phase epitaxy. I keep repeating, please refer to literature for more details. I have given you an idea what the technique is and uh, details you can always uh, go through other material. So, let me describe vapor phase epitaxy. This is an interesting technique. There are some, let me uh, give you some equations that uh, describe uh, deposition of gallium arsenide, aluminum gallium arsenide layers using MOCVD reaction you have a reaction chamber this is a reaction chamber in which there are substrate holders so what i have shown is substrate holders these are substrate holders
means on top of this there are substrate city 1 2 so these are substrates like i showed you in the lpe a gallium arsenide substrate will sit first so these are substrate city there is an exhaust here exhaust gas enters a mixture of gases required gases what are these gases i will show you in a minute enter from this is the reaction chamber so mixture of gas enters from here and reaction takes place on the surface of the substrate inside the reaction chamber this is chemical reaction which takes place on the surface of the substrate and the layers get deposited the remaining gas is exhausted now there could be there are different techniques used there could be lamp heating so these are heating lamps or there could be rf heating there are different heating techniques this is lamp array it is not coil now, it is lamp array, heater lamps or there could be RF heating, heating of this, heating of the substrate. Now, we have to see what is this mixture. This mixture typically comprises of, if I want to grow I will draw it, then I will explain to you the reaction. this is actually hydrogen gas is used H 2 gas which is bubbling through these and the vap vapors are carried. I could have probably drawn this and shown you directly the setup, but it is ok. So, we have so let us say this is there are everywhere there are mass flow controllers which are shown as taps. So, the taps which I am showing here are basically mass flow controllers, let us say T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4. So, hydrogen gas from here and arsine from here, arsine it is a highly poisonous gas. And if you need to add some dopants, uh, let me erase this. Mm. 
doping. So, this is trimethyl gall gallium TMG, trimethyl aluminum TMA, trimethyl aluminum and arsine here and hydrogen is the carrier gas. So, this entire mixture is entering the vapor chamber, the reaction chamber. So, see the reaction. Now, let us look at the reaction. Trimethyl gallium plus arsine here gives you gallium arsenide plus hydrogen here is the carrier. The reaction is taking place inside the chamber. So, gallium arsenide plus methane gas. Trimethyl gallium plus trimethyl aluminum plus arsine gives you aluminum gallium arsenide plus methane. So, this is the reaction, the chemical reaction chemical reaction is taking place inside this chamber. The CVD process is taking place here. It is a vapor phase epitaxy because the trimethyl gallium and trimethyl aluminum are carried by hydrogen gas in the form of vapor. Hydrogen is bubbling through this. So, these are mass flow controllers. The rate at which the vapors have to go is controlled by the mass flow controllers T 1, T 2, T 3. So, here is arsine coming and any dopant if you want to add, you also add the dopant gas. So, the reaction is taking place on the surface of the substrate and the gallium arsenide which is formed here is directly deposited on the surface. If you do not want in the next stage, if you do not want gallium arsenide to be deposited, you simply close this tap and only you are bubbling this one if you want to deposit only aluminum arsenide. But if you want to deposit only gallium arsenide, close this tap T 3. So, you can control by this technique the layers very precisely. Control is very good because the mass flow controllers can adjust the deposition rate on this is determined by the inflow of the mixture, the reactant mixture. And therefore, the control is very precise both in uh, MOCVD and the normal VPE. The reaction for CVD is also shown here. It is called CVD because now there is no metal organic compound. So, silicon tetrachloride plus hydrogen gas gives you silicon plus HCl. It is called CVD. Basically, they are all VPE. MOCVD is only when the reactants have metal organic uh, uh, chemical vapors. All right, I go to the last technique that is MBE. What this man? MBE. <coughs> Can I erase this? Anyhow, please see some good material to know more details. I come to the last technique MBE, which is widely used to deposit quantum to make quantum well structures, molecular beam epitaxy. The setup is quite involved, but the control is extremely precise you can deposit mono layers of gallium arsenide or aluminum gallium arsenide. Molecular beam epitaxy, which means there must be atomic beams which are coming to form molecules directly on top of the substrate. So, the chamber involves something like this. Let me draw it approximately. I probably like drawing 
that is why I want to draw this. <laughs> you have a fusion chamber, a fusion furnaces or a fusion chamber. Several effusion chambers through which atomic gas to atomic beams come out. So, there are shutters for each chamber. So, these are effusion chambers. I think it is single effusion chamber or furnace, effusion furnace. So, atomic beams come from this, what I have shown is shutters say S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 shutters. There is a main shutter and in front of this here is the substrate holder. There are quite uh, um, involved uh, setups with gear wheels and all those things. I am not showing uh, all those uh, uh, arrangements here, but so I have a chamber, there is a reed gun here. Okay, the diagram is more or less ready. And this is reed. Have you heard of reeds? Reflection high energy electron diffraction gun, reed gun. So, high energy electrons or electron beam is incident on this here and it is diffracted here, there is a, this is a fluorescent screen. Fluorescent, fluorescent screen. This is for rotating mechanism. It is actually rotating in a different way. So, on the substrate, what I have shown is the substrate, this is the substrate, this is the loading chamber, the double barrier ultra high vacuum lock. Okay. Now, let me explain and then everything will become clear. These are sources, say gallium, aluminum arsenic and some dopant, if you want to put some dopant. These are atomic sources, so atomic sources. It is atom by atom which is come, so atomic beam is incident on the substrate. The substrate is kept heated at a certain temperature. The at atoms which come there on the surface of the substrate. So, atoms are arriving on the surface and because if this is gallium arsenide, the atoms arrange themselves so that it forms, it fits to the gallium arsenide lattice. So, at a time it is growing one layer by layer, that is why you call it monolayer. You are allowing gallium, atomic gallium to come from here, aluminum, arsenic. If you do not want aluminum, you want to grow only gallium and arsenic, you put this shutter closed. This is a main shutter, if you do not want uh, any reaction to take place or you are doing some setting, then you close the main 
So, this is the main chatter. Molecular beam epitaxy, please see this. This is at ultra high vacuum, ultra high vacuum of 10 power minus 10 to 10 power minus 11 tor. It is ultra high vacuum chamber in which we have a substrate that is mounted. This is the substrate holder. You can rotate the substrate keeps on rotating. Atomic beams come from here gallium, aluminum, arsenic all these. They are actually this atomic the effusion chamber has each one has a crucible boron nitride crucible usually boron nitride crucibles in which you have aluminum you have placed pure metallic aluminum and it is heated and the atomic beam is coming out of these effusion guns or this chambers effusion furnace. So, there is independent beams are coming here. The atoms rearrange themselves in the lattice on the surface of the substrate. So, you can imagine the control that you have you are allowing the rate at which atoms are incident. The rate at which atoms are incident here is controlled by the temperature. So, in a controlled rate of gallium, aluminum, arsenide, you can change the ratio G A 1 minus x, A L x, arsenic. If you are growing the ternary compound, aluminum, gallium, arsenide, A L x, G A 1 minus x, arsenic, you can control this x. So, that required composition of aluminum, gallium, arsenide can be obtained. And the deposition is atomic monolayers, monolayer by monolayer, which means the control that you have is one atomic layer, one atomic monolayer, which means the control is of the order of 3 to 5 angstrom. The layer thicknesses can be controlled correct to one monolayer, which means you can make abrupt junctions. You do not want gallium ars uh, aluminum arsenide anymore, you just block aluminum the next layers will be gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide pure. So, molecular beam epitaxy as it indicates as the name indicates there are beams atomic beams which come. One does not call it as atomic beam epitaxy because it is the layers which are grown are molecules. So, molecular beam epitaxy there are beams of atoms which come here and the layer is deposited on top. So, this is the third technique you can read more details about this is a very interesting technique and most of the quantum well structures are grown by MBE technique. So, I will stop here uh, I hope I have given you an idea about uh, the different techniques which are used uh, plenty of details are required to understand each one of them uh, further. So, we will stop here and uh, go over to part 2.